Uh, hi, I'm Tao Wang from NYU. I'm going to introduce isolation mechanisms for high-speed packet processing pipelines. This is a collaboration with Sean Ray from NUDT, Johnny from Queen Mary University of London, and my advisors are Nirud and Panda from NYU. In recent years, more and more programmability is back into the networking devices. The data plane programmability is mainstream now. So in this talk, we focus on the pipeline-based programmable networking devices with a reconfigurable mesh table or the RMT style architecture, such as Intel Mount Evans IPU, Fungible DPU, and Percento Smanix, and also the Intel Belfort Tofino switches. Lots of recent works has utilized those programmable devices into their uh, classical network system to improve the application and uh, network performance. But most of the systems are now deployed on shared cloud infrastructure. As the ecosystem of programmable devices measures and more and more applications bloom, one question is that can multiple tenant programs show one programmable network device? In our observation, the answer is not yet. Current pipeline-based programmable devices lack isolation mechanisms to support multiple programs. So what's the isolation requirements to the programs in the context of RMT? Some of them are common and apply to all kinds of other devices. For instance, one program cannot impact another's behavior or the performance. And when one's going to reconfigure its own part, it shouldn't disrupt others. And the isolation mechanism itself shouldn't degrade aggregate device throughput and latency. But let's look at an RMT specific requirements, which is expressivity. By expressivity, we mean that the complexity of program shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be further limited by the isolation mechanisms. However, existing works do not suffice to meet all the isolation requirements we listed before. It turns out the key challenge is the expressivity. Existing approaches for short of meeting expressivity because of the limited processing units on pipeline. Some approaches like NetVRM, which was presented this Monday, uh, focus solely on memory isolation. This is not generic enough to be applied to the other resources on pipeline. And also, it limits expressivity because it takes out the first stage resources to track memory hit ratio and the configure indirection table. Other approaches partition processing resources between programs However, as RMT is a data flow architecture with fixed stages and ALUs, partitioning will reduce the stages and ALUs that can be used by the switch programs, and it will limit the complexity of such programs. So one of our isolation goals is that we shouldn't limit whatever can run on RMT. So how to implement isolation in RMT? There are maybe two natural ways to do so. The first choice is that um, maybe we can enforce time sharing, which implements mechanism to switch between programs. But the problem is that it may be infeasible to store and save, uh, restore and save uh, context at a gigabit or terabit uh, per second rate. You only get several nanoseconds to do the context switching. Another choice is maybe you can enforce spatial sharing, which splits processing units between programs. As we just discussed before, the limited processing units is already a significant barrier for developers. Uh, if you uh, do the further splitting on the processing units between programs, it will definitely limit the expressivity and the usability of those devices. To this end, we may need a new approach and a mention is our proposal to this question. Uh, at high level, mention consists, uh, consists of two main parts. The first one is the software parts. The software well, um, deals with the tasks such as um, resource al allocation, and it also decides which program can or cannot be run on the allocated resources through compilation. Second, mention introduces new hardware primitives um, to meet the isolation requirements we listed before. With this new, newly introduced hardware and primitives, um, we can achieve the program switching at packet time scales. And also, uh, these hardware primitives uh, enable disruption-free reconfiguration. In this talk, uh, we detail 
how mentioned, you use these this newly introduced hardware primitives to achieve the program switching at packet timescales. Please check our paper for more details of other mechanisms. Benchens hardware primitives consist of embedding program ID and uh, using the technique of overlays plus the space partitioning. Basically, mention associates a program ID or the PID with each tenant program, and every packet flowing through the network will carry this PID. And in our current implementation, this is the VLAN tag. So basically, uh, for the packet format, mention only, uh, only assumes that each packet will carry this PID. So basically, uh, we fix the packet format as uh, the PID followed by the tenant defined headers and the tenant defined um, payload. Packets in the wrong format can be sent to the control plane for processing. Mention then uses this PID to select the program. Before going into the details of mention, uh, let's review how a RMT stage works. First of all, through a programmable parser, the packet header portion is parsed and stored in the PHV. The PHV is essentially the containers for the packet header fields that will be used or modified through the pipeline. Then at one stage, the, pack, uh, the PHV will serve as the input, and, uh, through, uh, and through a key extractor, and it will construct a table key, which will be then used to match against the match table to get the action. Then the action will be carried out on the PHV, and the newly modified PHV will be output to the uh, next stage for processing. With mention, it attaches the PID with the, uh, to the um, PHV and changes the portion shown in purple. So let's take a, a key extraction as an example. Different programs may have different table keys. And Mention deals with this by maintaining a key extractor configuration table in the registers. As you can see, different colors re represent different configurations for different programs. When a packet comes in, the PID, uh, which is green in, in this example, is used to index the configuration table to get the green configuration for, for the key extractor to use. The key extractor then um, selects the fields from PHV according to this configuration to construct the table key. So just like the um, memory management from early days operating systems, um, this configuration table allows different configurations overlay on the same key extractor. The key extractor can only use uh, a single configuration at a time. Uh, uh, for example, the, uh, the packet with yellow PID will use the yellow configuration and the uh, green, uh, later then a green pack, uh, a packet with green PID comes in, it will select the green configuration. So reading this, uh, since all these configurations are stored in the configuration table, uh, in the registers, it's, uh, hence it's faster to read. And uh, it doesn't harm the uh, throughput uh, because of the pipelining technique. This means that other packets are processed by the pipeline uh, while this packet's configuration is being read. So it doesn't harm the uh, expressivity. The program parser works in a similar way. And uh, in the mesh action process, the, both the PID and the table key are matched against the table entries in the mesh action table to get the action entry. So in this case, each, uh, each entry in the mesh action table is appended with the PID. So the PID effectively works as an indicator of the regions that are allocated to different programs. So the resources here are space partition among the programs. Lastly, in the action engine, the selected action entry is used to configure the crossbar and uh, configure the operation codes of, of each ALU. The crossbar will select the fields from PHV and uh, use them as the operands of each ALU. At the same time, PID is used to index a segment table 
to get the stateful memory offset and range. The LU then uses this configuration to convert the virtual address to the physical address to access the stateful memory. So the resources here uh, are space partition and more programs. The LUs will then carry out the operations and, and uh, output to the PHV. To sum it up, uh, Mention uses overlays and space partition to enable program switching and packet time scale uh, while preserving the expressivity. Tables are memory are partitioned between programs and it doesn't hurt the expressivity because tables and memories are plentiful. Overlays are used on per program and configuration. They do not strictly partition the processing units between programs, so it doesn't hurt the expressivity. Also, the configuration tables are stored in registers. It doesn't harm the throughput, but allows the program switching at packet time scales. For mention, we have an open source implementation for both software and hardware. The software is sent before reference compiler, and the hardware is integrated with the uh, uh, NetFPJ and the Corundum. It also has an open source RMT pipeline, which we hope others can use for their own RMT extensions. Mention also has an ASIC synthesis, which can work at one gigahertz. In the evaluation, we want to demonstrate that Mention achieve all the isolation requirements. So basically, we want to answer four, uh, three main questions. First, can it support multiple programs? Second, does it have the aggregate performance? Third, uh, is it disruption free? For the first uh, uh, question, we picked six P4 tutorial programs plus the simplified net chain and the net cache programs. Uh, to show that uh, all, the pa all the traffic is not corrupted by the isolation mechanisms of mentioned, we test the program connectors using the packet traces. The output packet mesh with the expected ones. To show mentions aggregate um, throughput performance, we use Corundum and the load calc program. The numbers are monitored by the tester. As we can see, uh, when packet size achieves 256 bytes, mention can achieve 100 Gbps and sustains this rate uh, for the increase in packet size. We also synthesize an ASIC version of mention's pipeline, um, which can work at one gigahertz, which translates um, into one billion packets per second. To show mention is disruption free, we have three calc programs constantly sending out traffic with figure ratio on a 10 Gbps link. As you can see, at the 0.5 seconds, program one starts to reconfigure and its throughput drops to zero quickly. And during the reconfiguration of program one, the throughputs of program two and program three are not affected. After one second reconfiguration, a program one's throughput recovers, and throughout the whole process, the throughputs of other two programs are not affected at all. What's to mention that the reconfiguration time of program one is inflated to one second um, to, uh, for the better visualization. Uh, typically, uh, mentions reconfiguration time uh, is comparable to the commercial products. So in conclusion, um, the lack of isolation is a barrier to the adoption of, uh, of programmable networks. Mention is our proposal for, uh, to provide isolation for RMT arch uh, architecture. The core idea is that uh, it redesigns how time and the space sharing work in RMT. Please check our papers for more details. Also, Mention is publicly available at isolation request. Please uh, use this for your RMT extension proposals. And uh, also feel free to drop us emails if you have any further questions. Thank you.